And yet, as we see as we go through this, they'll talk a lot about their defense. And I should have said Mississippi State was going to win the opening, too, because <laughs> they always do. They have won it in all but one game this year. Now, can they score off of it? That's the next question. Alana Smith will look inside to Kayla Jordan with the ball, immediately smothered by the Creighton defense. The Brescia Poe with the first points of the game. Taking a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One for the Creighton Blue Jays. Rachel Saunders, Lauren Jensen, Molly Mogensen, Morgan Molly, and Emma Ronzik, all Big East first honorable mention selection this year for the Blue Jays. Well, one of the things right off the bat here that you see uh, for Creighton is that they are a great screen setting team. You don't get all those threes without being good screen setters, and they draw a foul on a great screen to start the game. I don't know if Sam Purcell slept at all last night talking about all the movement off the ball that this Creighton team will do offensively. Purcell in his first year as a head coach ever leading the Mississippi State Bulldogs here. Two Both. bodies around yeah. Carter. They're going to have to have that extra help. Ten on the shot clock. Hayes goes out to Poe. Quick start for the freshman. I mean, step out, make your first two threes. Let's, hey, Creighton, back at you. You want to shoot threes? <laughs> I can too. What do we say about inside, outside? Yeah, the Bulldogs do have some three-point threats as well. And there's one for the Blue Jays. It is Saunders. Bulldog ball into the basket. Anastasia Hayes for three. The three's raining. I guess everybody's going to shoot him today. You'll also see here, too, with Ronsick trying to take Carter out away from the basket and get her out of her shot block. And now the takeaway. Again, the size in the paint, having a big defender on Hayes, and then a help by another big defender. Saunders going inside for Molly, and it's good. Carter not getting any kind of a look inside. It goes back out for Jordan. Four threes for Mississippi State to start the game is a little bit over their average. And now let's see if anything shifts as Jessica Carter goes off. Today, Carter onto the floor. Really an X-Factor type player for Mississippi State, but that big 6'5 size not out there anymore, although Romani Parker is also there. She's 6'4", the Louisville transfer. Parker stepped in the game the other night, knocked down two threes when she checked in. She sure did, and no fear by Jordan. Well, Coach Purcell said, hey, we got to run it right back at them. We can't let them just set their defense on us. Let's look and see if Creighton does anything differently here. Jim Flannery telling us they would be looking for those moments when Jessica Carter was not on the floor. Five on the shot clock. Having trouble getting a good look. That is a decent drive by Jensen. There's some contact, no foul, Mississippi State ball. So you're going to see a lot more substituting in this game. Mallory Brake, Carly Bachelor, Keani Lockett all on the floor off the bench for the Blue Jays. We told you about Parker. Romani well, Parker missed 11 games this season for the Bulldogs. Sickness and then concussion keeping her out for a while. Trying to make the most of this NCAA appearance. This is Keani Lockett, one of the freshmen for this Creighton team. One of the few who does not have that experience of last season. Hard cut through the paint and it draws a foul against the Bulldogs. There's his girls, by the way, dancing behind him. They have had fun the entire oh, they time have. they've been here, whether it's on the court or in the hotel. <laughs> they have been ready. They want to stay. They want yes, they do. Keep this journey going for the Bulldogs. Make a little history. Charlie Cream, by the way, I asked if he wanted a response to that talk to me nice list as Ronsick gets two more for Creighton. And he said, I am honored to be on the talk to me nice list. <laughs> Mississippi State feeling like they present some matchup problems as well. Offensive rebound keeps it alive. Lana Smith will try to go to work, but throws it away. Well, we can recruit a bunch of shooters and a bunch of mid-sized wings that all know how to play. And so this style has evolved. Um, I mean, they've had some really good point guards in the past, but in general, this allows more people to be involved in the offense. And there you have it again. Four people touch the ball in that play, and you get a penetration. A win against Iowa. 
have to go ahead with 12 seconds left as Asian A. Johnson drives to the basket for Mississippi State. Creighton looking for the shot they want. Is this it from Jamie Horan? Up and over it goes. The junior can't connect. Morgan Molly at 6-1 trying to defend Carter right now. And she commits the foul. That'll put Jessica Carter on the free throw line. So good for this Mississippi State team, leading them in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage. In fact, led the entire SEC and, and now really playing with a lot of joy for this Mississippi State team. That's exactly the right way it worked, joy. Foul here by Johnson. It's going to put Creighton on the free throw line. Rachel Saunders will do the honors. I was very impressed when we talked to Rachel yesterday of how eloquent she was about all the experiences of this team. Uh, last year and how they had to, you know, kind of keep that mindset. Three, up and in from Johnson. She hasn't made a three in the last seven games. Why not now? Why not us? That's Why not? the question that's, Mississippi State's been asking. That's, that's Coach Purcell's mantra to his team right now. And we said it earlier, Creighton ranking in the top four in the country in terms of three-pointers made per game on the season. We're getting their attempt average up. They're just only getting the make average up. When you get the feeling, there's a little frustration after that last foul was called against Mississippi State, trying to figure out how to defend all this action from the Blue Jays without foul. Smith Saw an opening. Bronzik with the rebound. Notice how spread the floor is for Creighton here. Back screens on the weak side. You really have to communicate and talk defensively. Courtney Weber, Florida State transfer, gives it back to Johnson. Nine transfers on this Mississippi State team this year. Anastasia Hayes, one of those as well. Was all SEC second team last year with the Bulldogs, but it's played at Tennessee, played at Middle Tennessee. Different role for the Bulldogs this year. As she told us it was a little bit, uh, told us it was a little bit out of her comfort zone at the start. Final few seconds of quarter number one, rolling off the clock. Maybe one more shot for Mississippi State. Not quite enough on that one from Alana Smith. Go to NCAA.com. Creighton men also a six seed. They got their win earlier today against NC State. The women, though, trailing Mississippi State as we start the second quarter here from South Bend, Indiana. Molly will try another long range shot, gets her own rebound. Look at the Blue Jays battling on the boards. They line up Jensen for a triple. That one goes down, as do three players. Two from Mississippi State, one from Creighton. Here's the original rebound. Here's the shot, and then everybody in the collision. Saunders, though, from yep. Creighton, the one whistled for the foul, her first. Inside, off the glass is good by Jordan. Since that, though, they're 10 and 2 in their last 12, and the only two losses came by two points at UConn and against Villanova in the Big East tournament. See, I think this is the stuff that's got to get cleaned up. There are people on both teams just running right through screens. Another three! Jordan hits her second triple, and Mississippi State right now. Six of eight from the three-point line. You know, kind of different styles depends on what you want to play against. You just saw the records all time for the programs. Notre Dame unbeaten against both of these teams. Just one meeting against Mississippi State. That one coming in the 2018 NCAA championship game. Shades of Arike Ogunbowale. All right, I'll say it one time on the air. Okay. My daughter was an assistant <laughs> coach at Mississippi State. It was a killer. I know. It's, I know. Mississippi State feels your pain. Yeah. Seriously. What? 
best run in program history by the Bulldogs with a couple of back-to-back -back championship game appearances. And, you know, really since that time, there's been a lot of turmoil for this Mississippi State program. You know, the last thing he talked about today with his team was no matter what, we're in the NCAA tournament, this should be a fun time of the year. This is why you play. So please go out and have fun. You know, play hard, do the things you're supposed to do, but, but have fun playing it. What does Creighton need to get right on this end? Well, I think I think they just got to create more of those kind of cuts. Back screens on the weak side. Uh, those have been some of their biggest baskets. Trying to just dribble and penetrate against the quickness of Mississippi State isn't usually going to get it done. Carter has her first field goal of the game. Emma Ronsick was talking to the media yesterday and saying, you know, we are more than just a three-point shooting team. This part of their game is important too, but Batchelor turns it over in this possession. You can't take that much time dribbling the ball against Miss, uh, Mississippi State. They're going to come help. They send a second defender that time. You can't be casual. The back cuts, the flares, those are the things that will get you open. Anastasia Hayes with the drive and one more coming. 527 to go in the second. Yeah, that's that's a really early one in and usually coach Flans would you know trust her to be out there Tough spot to get it in the corner Jensen gets out of there and then some It's a nice little left hand getting up over a large defender like Carter Mississippi State has quickness and size Anastasia Hayes to the basket, a rebound Carter. Smith, who has five assists in the game, knocks down the triple. That's a great pass out. We talked about a dagger three off an offensive rebound. Working a big lead. Shot clock getting down, but what a finish by Ronson. That's a good cut. Hayes. Well, when, and when you're a team that shoots as many threes as Creighton does, if you start making them, you can get back in the game in a hurry. Here's they're trying to get a, a, the mismatch taken care of, but it's very difficult. So Hayes does a great job of running. The backside help for Mississippi State was great. Now they come back patiently. One of the things this Creighton team talked about, they've been asked a lot, obviously, about that great run last year. They've never been to the Sweet 16. Well, they went one step further, went to the Elite Eight. They understand the tempo of a game can change. It can go up and down. NCAA tournament wins last year. Oh, they were fun upsets. to watch. Yeah. I mean, you know, they beat some really good teams along the way. Caitlin Clark in the Hawkeyes and then taking on Iowa State, taking them down in the next game. Take advantage. Take advantage. No question. Ronsick's had the hot hand, leaves this one short. Johnson. Smith got stuck on the baseline and fouled. Got to get that legal guarding position established. Alana Smith, seven points in the game. And actually, oh, Carla and Carter. Yep, Danae Carter, her second. Bronsick, the triple is good. Difficult baseline drive. Today Carter couldn't finish. Lock it. Knocks it in. And no Jessica Carter on the floor. Turnover. Creighton can add to the 6-0 run. Turnaround from Jensen. Got it. And a timeout quickly from Coach Purcell. You have to talk, you have to help. He said Creighton has that championship DNA. They understand what it's like to be on this stage and win the triple. Another one for Jordan who holds up the three afterward. Jensen playing with a full head of steam and some confidence. Well, and we thought the pace was pretty good at the start, but it feels like it's even picked up a little oh, yeah. bit more. This is it right here. Last shot time. What are we going to get? Carter is back on the floor. Hayes. It'll be Smith at the buzzer. No. 
But a 10-point game, and the pace picking up just as we get to the break here, 47-37. And for Creighton, they need to get Molly a little bit more involved. She's normally one of their top three scorers, and she's got two points now here at halftime. And they, they need a little more balance in their offense. It's been basically carried by Ronsick and Jensen. Molly, number 30 on the inside, trying to guard at Carter right now. Jessica Carter, leading scorer for the Bulldogs on the season. 6-5, nobody that can touch that. See, now we had a switch that time, and Ronsick was being guided by guard. Instead of popping out to the three-point line, she probably needed to do right what she's doing now and get inside the lane. Jensen off on the attempt, and that's one thing Carter can certainly provide for you no matter what. Hitting the glass, it's her fifth rebound. And it's easy to think because she's only got four points that she's not having a big effect on the game But she really is when she's in the paint it controls it defensively and she has gotten some threes for her teammates because there's been help in the paint That pass Will go in go. the bank all day long if Carter gets her feet right Jensen taking it to the basket Carter rises up over everybody Smith on the run. Can you stop Jerkayla Jordan? Well, she gets her own rebound, then dishes it off. One of the best in the SEC on the other end, and Carter block shots, but she didn't really have that many opportunities first half. There's the, there's the mismatch, Ooh. though. She gets behind the defense. It's nice when your post player can bring the ball up the floor and start your offense. Yeah, just a little between the legs, no yeah. problem. Now she gets back. Back out to Mogensen. Her first three of the night. So, too, has Jordan on the other side for Mississippi State. She's got 17. As you pointed out, that last timeout was called by Sam Purcell after Kayla Jordan made another basket. She's got 17 points in the game. It's a 13-point lead. Creighton Blue Jays with such success last year in the NCAA tournament, going all the way to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history. They came in hot, but... Mississippi State was successful in the zone coming out of the last timeout, so they're going to do it again. And now they have another turnover. They've won their first round game in their last four appearances, and they're six and two all time in the first round. Carter calling for it inside. She's been very patient, though. Hasn't forced much. Courtney Weber understanding, and you pointed out a few times how just her presence helps open up some things for her teammates. That southpaw shot from Molly won't fall. Big three players typically for Creighton. Molly is one of those as she'll try it again. Ronsick the other, and Jensen. Ronsick has had the biggest game so far. 11 for Jensen. She's in double digits. But how about Asian A. Johnson off the bench for the Bulldogs? Back to back shots. Ronsick. That's a much needed triple for Creighton. Smith getting things set in the half court. And there's another foul. Automatic foul when you put two hands on him. The spin to the basket by Parker. Well, that one looked pretty. Parker on the season, just a 63% free throw shooter coming into this NCAA tournament. Creighton's play, I mean, excuse me, Mississippi State has played with four guards on the floor quite a bit in this game to match up on the perimeter. Poe has not been on the floor much since the first part of the game. By the way, Weber, who just came back onto the court when Poe picked up her third foul, picked up her fourth. So now she's off, and today Carter is on in her place. And they just bring in another good guard to play. <laughs> yeah. Carter's kind of a hybrid player. She plays up front and at the backcourt. First four team has never in the, this, the second year of having 68 teams, made it to the second round. But if Jordan keeps knocking down shots like that, Bulldogs are going to be feeling good. Tenth three-pointer made in this game by Mississippi State. Ronsick, we've seen her score on plays like that. Not this time. Final heave. Short from Smith. 
but 18 to 8, the advantage for Mississippi State this quarter. Carter, that's the that, bread and butter. That would play. be a good shot. You get used to making a fair amount of threes. And nine isn't like a crazy number, but it, they're, they're shots that give you confidence and momentum. They just haven't knocked the open ones down. And those are open shots that just aren't going in. When you have games where you're making them like that, it just, I, I think it's deflating to your opponent, but it's been deflating the other way around tonight because it's Mississippi State that's made the big ones. Alana Smith at the free throw line. To the junior college ranks, played at Gulf Coast State, was the player of the year, first team All-American junior college player, 2019-20. Then went to Louisville for a couple of years where she met her now head coach. Good news for the team, well in the lead. Bad news as those seconds tick off for the Blue Jays who have yet to score in this quarter. That should change there, does. They're not used to going that many minutes without scoring. And Mississippi State, two and a half minutes without scoring too. On this end of the floor, no field goals anyway. Then at the free throw line, Carter. With two defending, finishes anyway as she hits the floor. Bronzik. No part of the rim helping her out on that shot. Lockett passes up the three, goes inside to Molly, who is fouled. I mean, they've missed a lot of open looks. Uh, maybe a little bit rushed, but they haven't been able to stop Mississippi State enough times consecutively. Well, that shot we had right there was one of them. A frustrated coach. If there was more hair there, I think he would have been <laughs> pulling it out a little I bit. I know that feeling. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful job he's done in his time, though, and has made this into a very difficult program to face. And really give a lot of credit to Mississippi State for, for just handling it and, and playing the chess match here tonight, figuring things out. This was last touched by Creighton. It'll be at Mississippi State ball between Mississippi State and Notre Dame, that 2018 national championship game. But if the Bulldogs hang on here, which it looks like they should do, they will get meeting number two against the Irish here on Notre Dame's home floor on Sunday. Now she did most of her damage in the first half. Those are her first points. Since the second quarter, 13 in the game for Jensen. Carter was called for the foul. Jensen back to back buckets. This one of the three point variety. Poe takes the three. Boy, you better make it if you're going to take it at that point. Ronsek, a lot of dribbling, but Hayes just. Lost her footing a little bit. Tania Latson, the terrific freshman, freshman of the year in the ACC, out for the Seminoles, as is their backup point guard, Amaria Gordon. So Rachel Saunders just picked up her fifth foul, and that means she is walking off the court for the last time. She has used up all of her eligibility. Yeah, and it's, it's a very empty feeling for anybody when your last game comes up. Uh, and, it's, and, and even in, even when you know you're coming back, the end of the season for whatever team loses is just a brutal feeling of emptiness the next day. Yeah. You look around like, well, what, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. Almost like when you retire. Kind of. <laughs> Jensen with a three. Some pressure and a foul. Alana Smith. Six of seven from the free throw line. And she is their best free throw shooter, or one of the best during the season. Yep, which eight. is over 80%. Best three-point shooter by percentage as well, but she's had a lot of help in that category tonight. Speaking of threes, that's what Creighton is known for. And another one goes in. 22 points in the game for Jensen. Three triples this quarter. Great, great, great. Oh, and a great hustle play by Jordan to get back in it. Carter then wide open on the other end. I thought Creighton had made a great steal right there to give themselves another opportunity. I have a feeling there will be plenty of joy in that Mississippi State contingent. Especially if you're the one behind. 
Why not us? That's the question. They came together with nine transfers, second most out of any team in this NCAA field. A new head coach in his first year as a head coach, and he absolutely used that motivational material that nobody else believes we can do this, but they do have the belief inside their locker room, and now they're going to put it to the test against the three seed, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, on Sunday. That should be a good one. It should be a great game. You know this place will be jumping. Uh, students are starting to come back to campus from spring break. We might see more of that. Um, and the fans here will be fired up. And we have a 10-second backcourt call. And the 10-second or 8-second in ours wouldn't count. But it has to touch a player on the other end in the college game. So that means Creighton could have one last chance. Instead, it goes back into the hands of one of the key players in this one tonight. Jaquela Jordan leading this Mississippi State team into the second round from the first four to the second round, maybe more for Mississippi State.